Brace for that belly flop because you're stopping off at the card pool. I'm your host, Stu Galetta. And I'm Kyle Robertson. And today we're looking at part two of our hidden gems from Scars of Mirrodin. Yes, and as Stu mentioned, this is part two of our multi-part set review. You can also check out our previous segment where we talked about some additional hidden gems from Scars of Mirrodin. But... Without further ado, let's get on to this week's review. Let's indeed, and let's start at no number other than five. And Kyle, let's go with yours. All right, starting off, we've got my number five choice, Contagion Engine. Now, this is a scary-looking artifact that costs six mana to play, and has a heck of an effect to go along with that price tag. When Contagion Engine enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. And then, it has an activated ability where you tap it and tap four to proliferate and then proliferate again. Now, once again, proliferate is basically placing one additional counter on any number of permanents or players out there. So, right off, this is pretty strong for the fact that it just comes down and puts all of those counters out there, weakens and or destroys maybe an entire opposing army. This is obviously really good against token decks, yeah. but it's pretty good against most decks because unlike some red board wipes that we could mention, the damage just kind of still sits there in the form of those counters. It's a little bit faster actually than something like Nev's Disc. Maybe not quite as good, but it might also be better in some cases. Well, it totally depends on the deck, I, I like guess. it for the example that you're giving for Nev's Disc, because in green, me being a green, of course, mm -hmm. you don't really have many board wipes. You have to look to artifacts for that reason, or other colors. Nev's Disc is the main one, but this is also a secondary mm -hmm. example, which can work. And green also does use its counters, so Contagion Engine is serviceable for it in that regard. Yeah, I love the fact that every deck has access to it, and that's one of the reasons why this made my radar for sure. But also, let's consider that secondary effect, Just for four mana and a tap ability, you can proliferate twice. twice. That's really good. Yeah, it's like two mana for each proliferate right there. That's, you know, you buy one, you get one free. What's better than that? Uh, yeah, and plus, there are so many ways to untap artifacts and get more mana that you could conceivably do this multiple times in the same or turn if you have the back right in setup. to get the counters out or something yeah, like that. So yeah, so even if your opponent has a huge army of scary creatures, you can bring them down to size significantly with this, and, and that is something to write home about. Oh, totally. And well, also, it's kind of like a half an Elish Nor, because Elish mm, Nor, sort uh, of. the Praetor, goes ahead and enters, and all your opponents get minus two, minus two on their yeah. stats. Now, again, the once Elish Dorn leaves, that goes, goes away. away. This doesn't. This stays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, again, if those creatures die, you know, all right, you, you can't proliferate them anymore. But you can recur this. Like you said, this is serviceable in any deck for the most mm -hmm. part. And green, it really is good because there's truly, I would say, no 100% guaranteed board wipe. And this is along the lines of that. But for the mana cost, 10 mana... How hard is that for green to get to? Yeah, and there's also a very small handful of decks out there that revolve around minus one, minus one counters. Scorpion God, Hapatra, Hapatra. mostly from the Amonkhet set that actually really, really love this card. So yeah, they, they revisit it. It just gets better it. with time. It really does. It does. It's like a, a good marinade. You just gotta let it <laughs> sit, and then bam. Minus one counters are the, the marinade of magic. But it costs a lot to play, but the value could be just so amazing that it's worth a look. It is true, Kyle, but I think the value on my next card is also something serviceable as well. All right, go ahead. At my number five, we have a card called Shape Anew. It costs four mana, three generic, and a blue for a sorcery. The controller of target artifact sacrifices it, then reveal cards from the top of his or her library until she or he reveals an artifact card. That player puts the artifact onto the battlefield and then shuffles all of the cards revealed this way into his or her library. Huh. So this is a unique edict effect for the fact that it makes someone sacrifice something. And there's tons of troublesome artifacts out there that need to get destroyed that are oh, even obviously. indestructible too. So on a blight steel, you can get rid of it, which is very very hard to have actually happen. That is true. I mean, you can't get around Hexproof and Shroud with this, but that's interesting. It's like a it's like a polymorph for artifacts, yep. then, isn't or, it? Or uh, a uh, Chaos Warp in red, yeah. actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you, again, it's blue doesn't destroy typically, so the fact that it's removing something is very big without actually having, you know... It, it could be any player, so that's really right. strong. Lightning Grease is a very annoying equipment, along with any of the swords that you have out there. So being able to get rid of that to give them a Soul Ring... Fine, I'd rather that than have to worry about something. Or give them a Solemn Simulacrum oh, or yeah. any other staple that you typically see, a Dark Steel Ingot. 
I mean, it takes anything out of the equation that would be a big problem and replaces it. It's kind of like Cascade meets, like, uh, I mean, a variety mm -hmm. of other things. And if you think about it, this is almost like um, Tinker, but in blue. Yeah. And Tinker's banned in Commander. So for having something that's a pseudo-worse Tinker, I mean... How bad is that really, honestly? Yeah, I mean, it's potentially a combo piece for yourself, a removal spell for other people. The only downside here is I like Polymorph better because it targets creatures, and creatures are usually more problematic. But hey, having one that deals with artifacts is pretty good, too. Well, on Nev's Disc or an Eldrazi Monument hits, you need to get rid of those and get rid of them quick. So this could work. Yeah, no, it absolutely could. That's interesting. I really did not know about that one. Me neither, <laughs> actually. So it's... uh. It's something I've never seen. I'd like to see it more because even, again, standalone, it can work. It can whiff. It can help you. It can hurt your opponents or somewhere in between. So. Yeah, a little chancy and narrow for my taste, but, but still political. good to know that it's out there. It's a very political card, and that's why I really like it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And it's super cheap, too, to pick one up. But <laughs> my next card here, I'm so anxious to share this. This is one thing you definitely don't want to see either in play or played by something like Shape Anew. Number four on my list of hidden gems is Argentum Armor. This is, again, a very large card here, an equipment artifact that costs six mana to play and six to equip. The enchanted creature gets plus, I mean the equipped creature, rather, gets yeah. plus six, plus six, talking about equipments here. Whenever the equipped creature attacks, you can also destroy target permanent. Yeah, you read that right. Destroy just about any permanent for the simple cost of attacking with this thing. It's hefty fine, dude. Oh, I'll admit that this is very costly to play. I mean, six mana to play and then six to equip it is just really difficult to swing, especially when yeah, when you're trying to build tempo in the game. This is not really a good way to spend your time, but still, that plus six plus six is a really awesome stat boost and destroying any permanent, I mean... Wow, that could be really good. It puts it on par with Beast Within. Yeah. And again, this works with a variety of decks. And if we're looking at just commander possibilities, mm. why not a Planeswalker? You have... Uh, oh, yeah. What's her name? Nahiri? Nahiri the Lithomancer. Nahiri the Lithomancer. The classic one. Or you even have Godo. But, I mean, this works in a variety of other decks that just love to have, like, uh, what, Voltron strategies? Get any Mostly, equipment yeah. on them? This is phenomenal. It, it, it's kind of like why you see Steel Hellkite run in decks, because right. inherently... Getting rid of things that your color can't get rid of is always valuable. And, and having this yeah. as a, a boost, yeah. Exactly. Like, it's because it's an artifact. We always say it goes in every single deck, gives all kinds of colors, permanent removal, which is great. It also, like we usually say, Stoneforge Mystic, open the armory, those kind of cards, they can yeah. tutor for it really easily. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic especially, because... Mm. I mean, that one's only been going up in price, but if you have that card come out into play, I think we have an image for it. We'll pull it up real Yeah, fast. I think we do. So, there it is. Yeah. So, you get two mana out actually to play it as well. It really cuts down on the cost of playing something like this. Yeah, and again, well, there's even other stuff in white that makes it so the equipped is free. That's so, if true. you can just go ahead, play this card, get that out, then bam, equip it for, like, nothing huge play. Your opponents aren't going to be able to rebuild, especially early in the game. So, this is a huge huge card that can really devastate plays. Yeah, this thing is really scary and will compel people to act to get rid of it almost immediately, or they're going to lose the game and you know, lose all the good things on their board. So, especially with Goto, like we mentioned before, that's really nasty because it triggers extra combat steps for more oh, destruction. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, like, that's a really good combination, and there are plenty of red and white decks out there that... Wait. Focus on extra combat Goat? steps. How does go to get extra combat steps? He well, he inherently untaps himself. Mostly, it's very narrow because there aren't many other samurais oh, that see play. Right. I didn't even think about yeah, that. I was exactly. just thinking of the the tutor effect. <laughs> the tutor effect's usually the big. Oh, that spot too. For him. Yeah, but, uh, but it's it's point. interesting. More combat steps means more triggers, which means the hits are coming a lot stronger now. And with more steps, it's actually triggering your fit bit more. So this way, you can get those calories off you way quicker. That too. <laughs> but moving on to my number four, actually, which has nothing to do with calories, but has to do with a vat of other stuff. It's called Mimic Vat. It is a three-drop artifact that has imprint on it. And if you imprint any non-token creature that is put into the graveyard um, from the battlefield this turn, you exile and that is now attached to this card. But if you do that for three mana and tapping it, you put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of the exiled card, and it gains haste and exile at the next beginning end step. So this is a mm. card that is very bizarre, nifty, <laughs> unique. It's almost gimmicky, but it's better than that. And that's why I'm ranking it so high on my list because 
this can do a lot of things. I've heard a lot of people argue this is a commander staple, and well, I mean, I would be inclined to agree, sort of. <laughs> yes. Well, yes and no. I don't know about staple, but it's something that, like, any deck that's using Sundial the Infinite would use. But it gives you options to effects that your colors might not. Four-player game, you just leave this out there, someone board wipes, cherry pick which creature you want. You get oh, ETBs, yeah. you can get destruction, you can get combos, you can get anything. Inherently, this is like an 80% kind of card because it's only as good as what you're getting. So if, if you picture it off of your deck, if you have Sack Atlas and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you can get a little bit better of a strategy from it. But if you aren't doing that, inherently you're just playing off of another player's strategy to just take their best card. And it, how bad is that for three mana to get something that costs eight, five? Yeah, and plus one, the token gets haste. That's really awesome. So, so you, you can, can go in. ahead and swing immediately. But also, you can kind of change things up depending on what else dies. If you don't like what you have on there right now and some other better option shows up, sure, you can go ahead and switch it. It's no problem. And also, um, same thing that you would see with some sort of exile hitting the grave effect. You can permanently kind of neuter a card out, well, semi-permanently, neuter mm -hmm. a card out of the grave. So if they have some sort of recursion effect um, that you can go ahead and make it so that you can take that so they can't target this. They can't combo out with it. Like Sage of Hours is a card that can easily mm -hmm. destroy games so that they just oh, get yeah. infinite turns. Let's say that dies, you exile it, they can't recur it, they can't bring it out. It's, it's useful for that alone. Even yeah. if you're just doing that with it. It is sort of a very mild but still effective form of grave hate. That is kind of nice. Yeah. But moving on to something that has nothing to do with what I was talking about. Kyle, what's your card about? All right. Well, number three on my list is a card called Bellowing Tangle Worm. This is actually going to my quote-unquote least favorite color for a really awesome card, if you it's ask so me. so refreshing to see you choose a green card. <laughs> well, it costs five to play at three colorless, two green, and is a worm creature. It's a 4-4, four -four, and it has Intimidate, meaning it can't be blocked except by artifacts or creatures that share a color with it. And it has the blanket ability that all other green creatures you control also have Intimidate. I gotta bring this up before you even start going into this card. <laughs> Why doesn't it just say all creatures you control have Intimidate? You could just save so much money on ink right there, wizards. And that alone, even though it's a green card... I despise it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really know. That is kind of a good question. But moving on to why this is like oh, is yeah, one you of tell my me why you like it, yeah. actually. But intimidate. It's not a thing anymore. This ability was phased out more or less over the course of a couple of years. It hasn't been that long, but they did it because intimidate is almost a form of unblockability against a lot of decks. And that makes it really unfun to play against. So they sort of phased it out once they realized their mistake in designing it. And I did it gives, not know that, actually. Oh, yeah. That. It gives all colors the access to pseudo-unblockability. That's pretty broken. So, so it's like a stronger yeah. fear, inherently. Oh, oh yeah. It well, it basically is fear for any different color. And like you said, it's sure they can be blocked by artifacts, but let's say you're playing a green deck with this thing in it and someone else is playing red or they're playing blue or something, that means they inherently can't block probably 90% of your creatures, and that's really powerful. Yeah, and green especially, you know, the big fatty coming at you. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is a very blue type effect on a very green card. It can make your entire team unblockable, but I would argue it's only good in... A deck that uses, obviously, a lot of green creatures. Probably a mono green deck. I, would I wouldn't play it you. outside I, of that. I don't think it's blue. I think it's more black. That too. Well, that is where the Intimidate ability sort of comes from. So, like I said, I probably wouldn't play this outside of just a mono green deck. Because it's too chancy and circumstantial otherwise, Well, really. it depends on your commander. If you're doing, like, big combat damage off of, like, you know, Voltron, whatever. Or just, like, an, like Progenitus, for example. Yeah, perhaps. Like... I mean, it's already a protection from everything, so I don't True. really know or any other five-color commander that's out there. So yeah, it has its plays, but I agree, probably predominantly mono green. This is just a very strange ability to see in green, and of, when it's an anthem like this, it's especially powerful. And in green, that's just so useful. I had to mention this. Yeah, card. the more colors you actually add into it, the worse it gets. I just realized. Yeah, yeah and that, it that doesn't does. actually help at all. Strike that. I just became literate in magic real fast, so my bad. <laughs> but yeah, an evasive anthem in green. How often do you see that outside of an artifact? Yeah, it really or an equipment or some sort of yeah, aura. Like so exactly. that's yeah, it's not bad. I actually initially shot this card down when you first showed it to me. I was like, 
That's why you don't understand Green Cow. But apparently, no, I think I think you're actually a little... You got some foresight on that. Oh, so. I think so. This is just, like, really, this is one of the big sleepers of the set, in my opinion. And for Commander players, y'all should check this card out, because it's won me a lot of games, actually. Fair enough. Well, moving on to my number three, actually. I'm going to be talking about a card that is needed almost in every deck. It's called Semblance Anvil. Now it's an artifact that costs three mana and it has the imprint effect on it as well like we've just gone over. But in this case what happens is the spells that you cast that share a type with the exiled card have two less mana to be cast, two generic mm. less. So this is a very very strong equi equipment artifact that can come out into the play and make it so that you can move to the late game super duper fast. Yeah, it sort of looks like an equipment, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, my mistake. But the reason why this really strikes me as such a strong card is because there's cards out there that have multiple archetypes attached to them. Mm -hmm. So you have Burnished Heart, which is both an artifact and a creature. You have Dryad Arbor, which is a land and a creature. And you have Heliod, the god, who is an enchantment and a creature. Mm -hmm. So inherently, if you hit one of these kind of cards with the imprint effect, you have the reduction twice twice so again you make so enchantments and artifacts or creatures or whatever combination between are now costed less by four or two or you just get so much more for it it makes it better than like a typical medallion because you're getting so much more bang for your buck that is true i mean the price of exiling a card from your hand can not be great depending on what you have in your hand you might not want to get rid of any of that stuff permanently but early but game? still like come on a two mana discount on anything of a certain type especially when you're your deck is probably all about that one type of card yeah that's pretty great yeah it just helps in such a wide variety of things because if you think about it lowers the commander tax by two all right so it's pretty much getting two free casts of your commander for regular yeah. stats if it's an artifact creature you got it for the next two turns after that you just have to worry if this card gets destroyed you've lost a card to exile which is going to feel kind of bad and then you have to now pay the regular cost for everything but in early game i mean Think about this. You play Soul Ring, you get this out real quick. Then you do that, you lower the cost even more. Uh, how much further are you than your opponents? Yeah, I used to play this back when I played actually a colorless EDH deck with Kozilek as my commander. Oh, you did do that. Yeah, it was just, that was really good. It takes a couple whole turns off playing your giant Eldrazi, as long as you exile yeah. a creature, and the deck was full of artifacts too, so a Either card way. like Burnished Heart getting hit with Semblance Anvil is Oh man, it's just it's so huge. great. It's, and again, I rarely see this card played. Like here and there, yeah. you'll find some people using it for little niche stuff. I think it's honestly better than Ingot. Like Darksteel Ingot's typically the one that's uh, played in the game the most. If you know. were to compare the two, which one's netting you more? It's the same thing as a medallion versus a signet. I don't know, man. I mean, but the Dark Steel Ingot doesn't ask you to get rid of a card from your hand. Commander you know? Sphere, and it's easier, and it's easier like to keep that. around. But at least that one gives you card advantage too. But but this makes it so that you <sighs> have such a huge discount, which is unparalleled to the game. I don't know that I would put this in like every single deck, but it is a pretty good card. And I think there are certainly decks that like really cry out for a card like this. But could it be a wider staple of the format? I don't know. I mean, maybe. Well, also think of it like this, right? Oh, no, I guess if you had your commander in your hand and you exiled it to this, it would just go to the command zone and it's no longer imprinted, right? No, I think it still would be, but I'm not entirely sure. I was the rule sharks get back to us on yeah, that. Yeah, I was thinking like something like Daxus the Returned, who is an enchantment creature. Mm. You go ahead, use something like Command Beacon, throw it into your hand, play this, and print it off of it. It goes back to right. the command zone. I mean, it doesn't matter if the tax is on it. You've just nullified it. Yeah, it is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, good question. Good question. But, yeah, it's, this is a good card. But it has its plays, which is the point. I've never seen it. It's super cheap for getting that kind of effect oh, yeah. out there. And, again, puts you eons ahead of your opponents. Yeah, I want to see more people use this card. But moving on to my number two here on this list, a card that I see, like, everybody and their brother playing all the time, and I just had to mention it because it's super good. Number two on my list is Leonin Arbiter. This is a white creature, a cat cleric, and it costs two mana, so one colorless, one white, for a 2-2. Two -two. And its ability is players can't search their libraries. Any player may pay two mana for that player to ignore this effect until the end of the turn. Now, people will, who play Modern will be very, very familiar with this card because it's one of the premier hate bears of the format and in Magic in general. And honestly, 
I think it's one of the fairer ones too, because if you don't be careful, yeah, you can kind of get you can kind of get messed up by this effect too. Yeah. So. Well, and that's the thing I don't like about like for honest reasons, I prefer Aven Mind Sensor, which is a way better card. I think just for the fact that I don't know that it's better. It is certainly much less likely to hurt you. Yeah, but I mean, it, it flat out shuts off the tutor effect. Like it has to be in the top four cards, and unless it's a black tutor, which can get any card, inherently it's going to whiff or not get the card that they want it'll speed up the top four sure but inherently you're getting that stranglehold which is what you want from leon and arbiter yeah but the reason leon and arbiter is so great is sure even mind sensor has decent stats but arbiter is just such a cheap aggressive body with this kind of effect that can come out this early it shuts down fetch lands in modern it shuts down tutors in most other formats and sure if you're playing like a ramp deck you're gonna feel bad playing this on turn two and keeping that kodama's reach in your hand yeah but still this is such a great card. You just have to be careful not to hurt yourself while you're playing it. Does, uh, for Kodama's Reach, would you have to do the, the, the cost twice? Well, right, basically, yeah. I mean, it would almost double it. the cost of the Seven card. Seven mana for two lands? That is ridiculous <laughs> right there. So, yeah, inherently, that's just shut off at that point. And it is a cat, point to note. Even though it's a hate bear, it's still a cat, and that is now relevant. Yeah, and like I said, Hate Bears is one of the premier decks of the modern format, and we see Leon and Arbiter there all the time. This actually used to be one of the money cards of the set, but has kind of dropped over time because it's gotten reprinted a couple of times. Yeah. But still, definitely, now that it's not a money card, I knew I had to bring it up as one of my hidden gems because, wow, this card is just really good at shutting I off combo hate decks. this card, but <laughs> again, Hate Bear, everyone hates it. Oh, yeah. But moving on to my number two, I'm going to be referencing a card that I referenced in our prior video. It is a card called Trinket Mage. It costs three mana for a creature, two generic, and a blue with a 2-2 body that is a human wizard. Both tribes are relevant right there. And it reads, when Trinket Mage enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less. Reveal that card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So right here, we have a very serviceable tutor that is in a good tribe and it makes it so you can get something that's very small but the thing that matters with this is that a lot of small cards have big influences in the game oh and obviously i mean like let's bring up a couple images right now we got something like the the moxes like chrome mox being an easy one mm -hmm. soul ring is the most noted one to get inherently every deck runs soul ring so every deck can inherently use trinket mage if you're in those colors yep. And, I mean, if you're looking for something more serviceable, like a, sp a particular type of land, you have, like, Expedition Map, which can help you with that. So, one-drop artifacts do have their plays in Commander, and, I mean, I've always seen them throughout. Yeah, and remember, this can get zero-drop artifacts, including artifact lands, yep. which makes this almost a ramp spell in blue. Yeah, which you really don't ever see in blue, inherently. Really, but uh, I, well, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about us doing a repeat card here, Stu, but I guess I can't fault you because Trinket Mage is one of my all-time favorites. It, so it's such a good yeah, card. Well, this is, is the good. original set it was printed in, correct? Scar, no, it was actually printed in the original Mirrodin block. So and this is kind of a repeat I'm here. I'm sorry, but everyone, if it seems like I cheaped out on this one. I hey, apologize. it doesn't matter. This is a great card, and I love talking about it. So yeah, I think if you're not playing this card, I don't know what you're doing, but because you should play it. <laughs> yeah, low cost, it's serviceable, chump block, works in blinked decks, can be recurred. The list goes on and on. Yeah, we've said it all. <laughs> but moving on to our final top ones. Kyle, what is your crown jewel? All right, well, my number one for Scars of Mirrodin is going back to the whole artifact theme, Steel Hellkite. This is a six-mana artifact creature, a dragon, too, which has 5-5 five, five and flying, and it has a pair of other abilities. You can tap two mana for Steel Hellkite to get plus one, plus oh until the end of the turn, or you can pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Also, you can only activate this ability once during each turn. Wow. I mean, look at this card. It is, I mean, first of all, dragons are really cool, and machine dragons are, like, doubly cool in my book. But doubly. it's pretty much exactly, it's, <laughs> it's just the right rate that you would want for a powerful creature like this. So six mana, five, five with flying, that's great stats, gonna really pressure people. Has that fire breathing ability, which I don't see it sometimes used relevant. too often, but can sometimes be pretty sweet. But that X, though, I mean... Wow. That's not, <laughs> I mean, if that was my ex, I don't know. <laughs> but seriously, being able to destroy 
any number almost of permanents. They all have to cost the same amount. So you kind of have to be smart when you're using this, but still. Works against wow. token armies really, yeah, pay really zero, well. Yeah, blow up the field. Yeah, yeah what's mean, your cost on. minus on that? Nothing. Um, exactly. And actually, I would note, this is a phenomenal one, especially for this being the original printing. I see this as a staple across Magic. It's almost as big of a staple as a card called Psalm Simulacrum. Mm, and that one's in there just for know. the pure value. I don't know. I mean, that is uh, obviously Solemn is kind of a staple It's a little in my higher. It's, it's a little higher than Steel Hellkite, mm. but for the fact that it, Steel Hellkite can get rid of any permanent, black can't get rid of enchantments, red can't really get rid of enchantments, green can't get rid of creatures inherently, uh, blue can't destroy anything yeah. <laughs> for the most part. So, I mean, like, it really needs something like this in Magic. And for oh, being yeah. a low costed card uh, financially, for a six drop with a 5 5 flying in this. I would rate it almost mythic. Yeah, it's been it's been reprinted a ton of times. The price tag is very low on this card, so you should buy your play sets just for the heck of it because I used to think this was kind of a commander staple. I don't really think that anymore, oh, but it it's, it, it makes it consideration so in almost every one of my decks because it's just that good. And when you have access to these kind of abilities in any color on a big aggressive creature that's going to end the game on its own too, I mean... Yeah, this well, is just an awesome card. And also card. look at its relevance. Like, seriously, it's a dragon that's an Great artifact tribe. Yeah. that's a creature that's... You're getting your bang for your buck that's removal, that can grow. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm I'm going to run out of fingers if I keep going, honestly. Yeah, so, it does it all. What a, what a great card, really. Well, moving uh, away from yours into a card that's a little less obvious in what it does, Kyle. Okay. I'm going to go to my number one now, which is called Liquid Metal Coating. And yes, that is the way to <laughs> announce it, actually. <laughs> Uh, it costs two mana for an artifact that reads tap. Target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until the end of the turn. So mm. think about that for one second, right? You just turn stuff into an artifact. All right, sounds kind of simple, no big deal, right? However, artifacts that we've been mentioning so far in both videos of our hidden gems have huge plays in magic for how serviceable they are. Mm. They interact with so many things, they are vulnerable to so many things, and they get around so many other things. So this makes it so that something is now touchable. Think about that. Inherently, you can make lands artifacts, you can make creatures artifacts, planeswalkers even. And there's commanders that love working with artifacts. Oh, we definitely. have creatures like Memnark, and we have a planeswalker commander like Doretti, for example. Being able to just flat out turn something into that is great. But I mean, also, think about it. You can destroy artifacts. You can now have a serviceable answer to anything by making it an artifact. Yeah, this is a combo piece. Make no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And there are just some really, really dirty things you can do with this card. Let's take a look Filthy at some things. other cards like Karn Silver Golem or Sidri, for example. These are cards that, I mean, Sidri is probably on the lighter side because, oh, you can give something, potentially any one of your creatures or anything like that, like Death Touch or Lifelink, or turn things like enchantments into creatures because they're artifacts now. Well, think of it differently. <laughs> you can turn people's lands into artifacts. Well, exactly. That's what I was getting to. Then you animate them. Oh, yeah. sorry. I mean, I dumped <laughs> it on that. My no, bad. that's all right. But that's exactly the point. Karn is the one that can do that. And like I said, it's a combo piece. If you play your cards right, you're going to destroy somebody's entire stack of lands, and they're going to be really mad at you. But that's kind of what this card exists for. It's a combo piece. And it's the same thing like what you were saying with Steel Hellkite. You can remove stuff that you couldn't remove before, especially if you're a very artifact-focused deck. Very. Brea is a great example of that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, like, oh, man. So, literally, it's... I, I rarely <laughs> see that card played. Yeah, no, it is... I think, like some of the other cards we've mentioned, I think this one has a very, very small niche in its application, but there are a lot of decks that this definitely belongs in and can definitely steal a game away from somebody. And for such a low-key card, it doesn't seem like it does anything on its own. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that this is your number one. Thank you. And I mean, it's also a card that you can play early, and it just sits there, and people are just, like, laughing at you until it takes the game out from them at the knees. Yep, you play the second piece of that combo and it's all over. Yeah, they're like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Woo! that's going to do it for us today. That is the cards that we have on our card pool. Indeed. And if you enjoy them, be sure to let us know which ones you like and where you see a home form of magic or even what decks you use them in. Definitely. And you can also let us know either in the comments down below or you can reach out to us on social media at our Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook pages, all at the handle MTG the Card Pool. 
And of course, stay tuned for next week where we'll be tackling the money cards of Scars of Mirrodin. But until then, I'm Kyle Robertson. And I'm Stu Galetta. And, and we'll, we'll see you next time at, at the, the card pool. pool.